are open. To you all desires known, we come to you confessing our sins. Forgive us in your mercy, and remember us in your love. Show us your ways, teach us your paths, and lead us in justice and truth. For the sake of your goodness, in Jesus Christ our Savior. By water and the Holy Spirit, God gives you a new birth. And through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, God forgives you all your sins. The God of mercy and might strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in eternal life. Heal each of us 
and make us whole people, that we may embody the justice and peace of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Come take a seat and join me for today's children's sermon. We are in the green season, the Sundays after Pentecost, when we think about how we grow in our love and faith in Jesus. Today, we are going to focus on the psalm. Let's listen to the story. David, the shepherd, loved his sheep. He led them to beautiful fields where they ran, played, jumped, and kicked up their heels. They ate the lush green grass and feasted on delicious berries. They drank from the cool mountain streams and splashed in refreshing waterfalls. David cared for each and every lamb. If one wandered over the hill, David was quick to go and find it. He put the lost lamb on his shoulders and sang sweet songs and hummed soft melodies. Sometimes he played his harp to help the tired lambs fall asleep. During times of danger, David fought against wild animals with only a slingshot and some stones. His sheep were not afraid because David was always with them. David thought about what he did as a shepherd and thought that God cares for people in many of the same ways that he cared for his sheep. One day, David wrote a song to tell everyone God is like a shepherd. God loves and cares for each and every one of us. God is my shepherd. He gives me all I need. He gives me wonderful places to rest and sleep. He lets me splash and play in cool, clear waters. He helps me do what is right. I am not afraid even in the darkest nights because you are with me, God, and your protection comforts me. When danger comes, you give me strength. My life is filled with your love and all I want is to be with you my whole life long. David sang this song to his sheep, thankful for all the ways God loved and cared for him. Jesus is our shepherd, and we are his sheep. He loves us and takes care of us and guides us where we go. Let's say a prayer, friends. Heavenly Father, gracious God, we give you thanks for your love and your strength, that you keep us safe in scary times. Be with us as we go out into the world and share your love every day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The first reading is from Jeremiah chapter 23. Woe to the shepherds who destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, says the Lord. Therefore, thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, concerning the shepherds who were shepherding my people, it is you who have scattered my flock and have driven them away, and you who have not attended to them. So I will attend to you for your evil doings, says the Lord. Then I myself will gather the remnant of my flock out of the lands where I have driven them, and I will bring them back to their fold, and they shall be fruitful and multiply. I will raise up shepherds over them who will shepherd them, and they shall not fear any longer or be dismayed, nor shall any missing be missing, says the Lord. 
The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will raise up for David a righteous branch, and he shall reign as, reign as king and deal wisely, and shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. In his days Judah will be saved, and Israel will live in safety. And this is the name by which he will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The second reading is from Ephesians chapter 2. Remember that at one time you Gentiles by birth called the uncircumcision by those uh, who are called the circumcision, a physical circumcision made in the flesh by human hands. Remember that you who were at the time without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers to the covenants of the promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, you who were once were far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace. In his flesh he has made us, both groups into one, and has broken down the dividing wall that is the hostility between us. He has abolished the law with its commandments and ordinances, that he might create in himself one new humanity in place of the two, thus making peace, and might reconcile both groups to God, one body through the cross, thus putting to death that hostility through it. So he came and proclaimed peace to you who were far off, and peace to those who were near. And through him both of us have access in one spirit to the Father. So then, you who are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are citizens with the saints, and also members of the household of God, built upon the foundation of the apostles and the prophets, with Christ Jesus himself, as the cornerstone. In him, the whole structure is joined together and grows into a holy temple in the Lord, in whom you also are built, together spiritually into a dwelling place for God. Word of God, word of life. The Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. The apostles gathered around Jesus and told him all that they had done and taught. He said to them, Come away to a deserted place all by yourselves and rest a while. For many were coming and going, and they had no leisure even to eat. And they went away in the boat to a deserted place by themselves. Now many saw them going and recognized them, and they hurried there on foot from all the towns and arrived ahead of them. As he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them, because they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. When they had crossed over, they came to the land of Gennesaret and moored the boat. When they got out of the boat, people at once recognized him and rushed about that whole region and began to bring the sick on mats wherever they heard he was and wherever he went, into villages or cities or farms. They laid the sick in the marketplaces and begged him that they might touch even the fringe of his cloak, and all who touched it were healed. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ.
I chose this song as the hymn of the day for in-person worship on July 21st. And as I prepared this sermon and looked at that worship, I tried to remember why. I mean, why are we singing about breaking down walls when in our gospel text all I can hear is this beautiful good news moment when Jesus invites the disciples, come away to a deserted place all by yourselves and rest a while. It might be that this is the only line I can hear because I'm days away from vacation and when you hear this sermon, I will have returned from said vacation. In this moment, I'm longing for that rest that Jesus invites the disciples to. I'm longing for that place set apart to rest a while. I suspect, though, that when I've returned, when you would hear this, I might still be longing because the truth is vacation as a parent is a very different thing than it what used to be. At any rate, I hear in this invitation to the disciples something so important for us to hear and receive from Jesus as well. I hear recognition of the work that the disciples have been doing, as well as recognition of the work that we have been doing to share the gospel through word, as well as through our very lives. I hear within this invitation the acknowledgement that the work can't be sustained unless there is rest. That being constantly surrounded by people with needs that you're trying to meet is great work, important work, but it must have its balance. I'm a strong proponent of this rest. I practice Sabbath in my life, and I advocate for that rest for everyone else, too. So in this 24-7 world, there's good news for us and an invitation for us in Jesus' words. Come away to a deserted place all by yourselves and rest a while. I wonder where and how you might come away from your regular life this week. I wonder where you could incorporate rest. But perhaps before we get to the living out of that rest, we first must address some questions that are probably on the hearts of many who live in this modern world. Why? Why rest? Why is it important? I mean, even in the gospel text, rest doesn't come to fruition. The crowds come, the people press in, their needs are so great, they are a sheep without a shepherd, Jesus says, and Jesus does in fact meet their need. Jesus provides for them, shepherds them. So is rest really that important? I say yes. And Jesus says yes as well, as the restful moment might not happen right now in the text that we just read, but it will come because rest is important. Because rest allows us to come home to ourselves. It allows us the space and time to quiet, to check in with our souls, our inner beings, the heart of who we are to tend to that heart, to listen to it, to give it space to breathe, to let it heal. Parker Palmer, in his book, Let Your Life Speak, talks about the importance of this inner work for all leaders. And Parker Palmer says, and I believe this too, that we are all leaders. Because we lead simply by being here and doing what we do. 
Parker Palmer says the power for authentic, for authentic leadership is found not in external arrangements, but in the human heart. Authentic leaders in every setting, from families to nation states, aim at liberating the heart, their own and others, so that its powers can liberate the world. Our hearts need liberation. And liberation comes from rest, comes with reflection, introspection, and perhaps solitude. We can only lead as far as we are willing to go in our own hearts. I think Jesus knew this. I think Jesus lived this so that after descending, sending the disciples out and having them return to him, he recognizes their need to rest, their need to integrate these experiences they've just had with who they are. As the song says, Christ our peace, you break down the walls that divide us, which in one light could be interpreted to be the ways that Jesus invites us and leads us to rest, to peace, so that the walls we build up inside ourselves, around our hearts, to protect ourselves, can be dismantled, can be broken down, so authenticity can be found. But this work to break down the walls within us is not just for our own sakes, but for the sake of our neighbor, to break down the walls between us, Creating boundaries for rest to happen enables the walls in ourselves, but also the walls we build around ourselves to crumble, to be made plain, to be broken down. The second reading from Ephesians gives us a vision of the world. It says, so then that you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are citizens with the saints and also members of the household of God, built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets with Christ himself as the cornerstone. In him the whole structure is joined together and grows into a holy temple in the Lord, in whom you are also built together spiritually into a dwelling place for God. This is a vision of community, a vision of a place where walls have been broken down so that we can live as the household of God, so that we can be built together into a spiritual dwelling place for God. And in order to do that, we need time to do our inner work so that we can get out of our own way so that we can get out of the way of this vision to come into fruition. When we take time to rest, when we take time to become well acquainted with our own souls, we can recognize that we are one with one another, one with every person around us, that we are in fact already, even when we don't even recognize it and we battle against it, we are already of the household of God, as we are all beloved children of God. The Center for Action and Contemplation, created by Richard Rohr, sees this very clearly. They see that action cannot be without contemplation, that time away to rest a while is important to the justice work we do in the world. We can't do one without the other. Contemplation must be a part of our story because as their website says, contemplation is a prayerful letting go of the, state, the sense of control and choosing to cooperate with God and God's work in the world. Because when we rest a while, we connect with God. And when we connect with God, we realize we are connected to all of life. 
when we experience the reality of our oneness with God, others, and creation, actions of justice and healing naturally follow. If we're working to create a more whole world, contemplation can give our actions nonviolent, loving power for the long haul. Christ is our peace. Christ breaks down the walls that divide us. Christ breaks down the walls that keep us in an us and them mentality. Christ breaks down the walls that keep us from one another. Christ, our peace, our rest, makes us one body in Christ. Friends, we live in divided times. We live in complex times. We live in times where the constant motion and action make it hard for our actions to be loving and healing. We live when it's hard to recognize that we are one in the body of Christ. And the antidote for that, the cure for that is not more action, or perhaps more action, but not action without contemplation, not work without rest. Rest is essential. So accept Jesus' invitation today. Come away to a deserted place all by yourselves and rest a while so that tomorrow or even in the next minute we can work with God to break down the walls that divide us so that we can work with God, with Christ our peace, to be one body in Christ, so that we can be built together into a spiritual dwelling place for God. Prayers of Intercession One in the communion of saints and in the power of the Holy Spirit, we join our voices in prayer. You gather your people into the body of Christ, where your church is wounded, heal it. Where it is right, strengthen it. Where it is divided, reunite it. In your mercy, receive our prayer. From before the foundation of the world, you are God. Revive ecosystems destroyed by human greed, Curb our desire to put wealth ahead of the health of all who call this planet home. In your mercy, receive our prayer. You establish equity and make justice. Within every nation, tribe and land, 
cause laws to be written and customs to be observed that protect the most vulnerable. In our mercy, receive our prayer. On the cross, your beloved Son endured pain and death. Bring healing to those in need, hope to any in despair and comfort to the dying. We pray especially for those we name aloud or in our hearts. In your mercy, receive our prayer. You send your spirit into this community of faith. Empower our ministries that serve and build up local communities, especially Mount Olive Preschool and the Little Pantry. Nurture our partnerships with other community organizations, especially the Westside Coalition, Santa Monica Interfaith Council and Westside Food Bank. In your mercy, receive our prayer. Holy God, holy and merciful, into your outstretched arms we commend ourselves all for whom we pray, entrusting in the one who is the way, the truth and the life. Jesus Christ, our Saviour and Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. A few announcements about the ministry of this place. The first is that on Sunday, July 21st, following worship, so at 10.30 a.m., we will have another Funding Forward session. We hope you can join us as we continue to learn and discern God's mission for I also invite you to attend our Vacation Bible Camp. That is, if you are ages 4 to 5th grade. Or if you know someone in those ages, let them know about this fun opportunity, a week of learning and growing and playing and crafting and being the community of Christ together. On July 23rd, we'll gather for senior celebration at 11 a.m. And we'll hear from the community organization Emeritus, which is an organization that uh, creates learning opportunities for older adults. And then on July 24th at 7 p.m., we'll have a book club. Now, you can purchase the book Mark as a Story and read it, and we'll come and talk about that book, but we're also simply going to be talking about the Gospel of Mark. So if you don't want to buy and read that whole book, you can just open your Bible and read the Gospel of Mark or the Book of Mark for our book club, and we'll have that discussion. Thank you for the ways that you support the ministry of Mount Olive. We're so grateful for your generosity. If you're looking for a way to give this day, please take a look at the description for this video. Thank you again for your support.
Clothe us in your loving spirit, flowing from the crucified and risen one, and keep us awake to your presence in the people and places you call us to serve. Glory, praise, and blessing are yours, holy God, now and forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Receive this blessing. The God of peace, the Christ of unending joy, and the spirit of hope bless you now and always. Amen. Go in peace. Share your bread. Thanks be to God. Amen.